Waikra, Leviticus, chapter 1. And Yahuwah called to Moshe and spoke to him from the tent of appointment, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to Yahuwah, you bring your offering of the livestock, of the herd, or of the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering of the herd, let him bring a male, a perfect one. Let him bring it at the door of the tent of appointment for his acceptance before Yahweh. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. And he shall slaughter the bull before Yahweh. And the sons of Aharon, the Kohanim, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around on the altar, which is at the door of the tent of appointment. And he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into its pieces. And the sons of Aharon, the Kohen, shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire. And the sons of Aharon, the Kohanim, shall arrange the pieces with the head and the fat on the wood which is on the fire on the altar. But its entrails and its legs he washes with water. And the Kohen shall burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. And if his offering is from the flock, from the sheep, or from the goats as a burnt offering, let him bring a male, a perfect one. And he shall slaughter it on the north side of the altar before Yahweh. And the sons of Aharon the Kohanim shall sprinkle its blood on the altar all around. And he shall cut it into its pieces with its head and its fat. And the Kohen shall arrange them on the wood which is on the fire on the altar. But the entrails and the legs he washes with water. And the Kohen shall bring it all and burn it on the altar. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And if the burnt offering of his offering to Yahuwah is of birds, then he shall bring his offering of turtle doves or young pigeons. And the Kohen shall bring it to the altar and shall wring off its head and burn it on the altar. And its blood shall be drained out at the side of the altar. And he shall remove its crop with its feathers and throw it beside the altar on the east side into the place for ashes. And he shall split it at its wings, but not sever it. And the Kohen shall burn it on the altar, on the wood that is on the fire. It is a burnt offering, an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. Waikra, Leviticus, chapter 2. And when anyone brings a grain offering to Yahweh, his offering is to be a fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it, and he shall bring it to the sons of Aharon, the Kohanim, and he shall take from it his hand filled with fine flour and oil with all the frankincense, and the Kohen shall burn it as a remembrance portion on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. And the rest of the grain offering is for Aharon and his sons, most Kodesh of the offerings to Yahweh by fire. And so you bring as an offering a grain offering baked in the oven, unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, or unleavened thin cakes anointed with oil. But if your offering is a grain offering on the griddle, it is a fine flour, unleavened, mixed with oil. Divide it into bits and pour oil on it, it is a grain offering. And if your offering is a grain offering in a stewing pot, it is made of fine flour with oil. And you shall bring to Yahweh the grain offering that is made of these, and shall present it to the Kohen, and he shall bring it to the altar. And the Kohen shall take from the grain offering a remembrance portion, and burn it on the altar, an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. And the rest of the grain offering is for Aharon and his sons, most Kodesh of the offerings to Yahweh, made by fire. No grain offering which you bring to Yahweh is made with leaven, for you do not burn any leaven or any honey in an offering to Yahweh, made by fire. Bring them to Yahweh as an offering of the first fruits, 
but they are not burned on the altar for a sweet fragrance. And season with salt every offering of your grain offering, and do not allow the salt of the covenant of your Elohim to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you bring salt. And if you bring a grain offering of your first fruits to Yahweh, bring for the grain offering of your first fruits green heads of grain roasted on the fire, crushed heads of new grain. And you shall put oil on it and lay frankincense on it. It is a grain offering. And the Kohen shall burn the remembrance portion from its crushed grain and from its oil with all the frankincense, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Waikra, Leviticus, chapter 3. And if that which he presents is a peace offering, if he is bringing it of the herd, whether male or female, he brings a perfect one before Yahweh and he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it at the door of the tent of appointment. And the sons of Eheron, the Kohanim, shall sprinkle the blood on the altar all around. And from the peace offering, he shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the loins, and the appendage on the liver which he removes with the kidneys. And the sons of Eheron shall burn it on the altar, upon the burnt offering which is on the wood, which is on the fire as an offering made by fire, a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And if that which he presents is from the flock for a peace offering to Yahuwah, male or female, he brings a perfect one. If he is bringing a lamb as his offering, then he shall bring it before Yahweh, and shall lay his hand on the head of his offering, and slaughter it in front of the tent of appointment. And the sons of Eheron shall sprinkle its blood on the altar round about. And from the peace offering he shall bring near as an offering made by fire to Yahweh. Its fat, all the fat tail, which he removes close to the backbone, and the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is on the entrails, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them by the loins, and the appendage on the liver, which he removes with the kidneys. And the Kohen shall burn them on the altar as food, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. And if his offering is a goat, then he shall bring it before Yahweh, and shall lay his hand on its head, and slaughter it before the tent of appointment. And the sons of Eheron shall sprinkle its blood on the altar all around. And from it he shall bring his offering as an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the loins and the appendage on the liver which he removes with the kidneys. And the Kohen shall burn them on the altar as food an offering made by fire for a sweet fragrance. All the fat belongs to Yahweh, an everlasting law throughout your generations in all your dwellings. You do not eat any fat or any blood. Waikra, Leviticus, chapter 4. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, When a being sins by mistake, against any of the commands of Yahweh, which are not to be done and shall do any of them. If the anointed Kohen sins, bringing guilt on the people, then he shall bring to Yahweh for his sin, which he has sinned, a young bull, a perfect one, as a sin offering. And he shall bring the bull to the door of the tent of appointment before Yahweh, and shall lay his hand on the bull's head and slaughter the bull before Yahweh. And the anointed Kohen shall take some of the bull's blood and bring it to the tent of appointment. And the Kohen shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before Yahweh in front of the veil of the Kodesh place. And the Kohen shall put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of sweet incense before Yahweh, which is in the tent of appointment, and pour all the blood of the bull at the base of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tent of appointment. 
Then he takes all the fat of the bull as the sin offering, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat which is on the entrails, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them by the loins, and the appendage on the liver which he removes with the kidneys, as it was taken from the bull of the peace offering. And the Kohen shall burn them on the altar of the burnt offering. But the skin of the bull and all its flesh with its head and legs, its entrails and dung, all of the bull, he shall bring outside the camp to a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burn it on wood with fire. Where the ashes are poured out, it is burned. And if the entire congregation of Israel strays by mistake and the matter has been hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they have done any of the commands of Yahweh, which are not to be done, and shall be guilty, when the sin which they have sinned becomes known, then the assembly shall bring a young bull for the sin, and bring it before the tent of appointment. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before Yahweh, and the bull shall be slaughtered before Yahweh. And the anointed Kohen shall bring some of the bull's blood to the tent of appointment, and the Kohen shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before Yahweh in front of the veil, and put some of the blood on the horns of the altar, which is before Yahweh, which is in the tent of appointment, and pour all the blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the door of the tent of appointment. Then he takes all the fat from it and shall burn it on the altar. And he shall do with the bull as he did with the bull as a sin offering. So shall he do it. And the Kohen shall make atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. And he shall bring the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. It is a sin offering for the assembly. When a ruler sins and by mistake has done any of the commands of Yahweh, his Elohim, which are not to be done, and shall be guilty, or if his sin which he has sinned is made known to him, then he shall bring as his offering a buck of the goats, a male, a perfect one. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the goat and slaughter it at the place where they slaughter the burnt offering before Yahweh. It is a sin offering. And the Kohen shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and shall put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour its blood at the base of the altar of burnt offering and burn all its fat on the altar like the fat of the slaughtering of the peace offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him for his sin and it shall be forgiven him. And if any being of the people of the land sins by mistake by doing any of the commands of Yahweh, which are not to be done, and shall be guilty, or if his sin, which he has sinned, shall be made known to him, then he shall bring as his offering a female goat, a perfect one, for his sin, which he has sinned. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering, and slaughter the sin offering at the place of the burnt offering. And the Kohen shall take some of its blood with his finger, and shall put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and pour all the blood at the base of the altar. Then remove all its fat, as fat is removed from the slaughtering of the peace offering. And the Kohen shall burn it on the altar for a sweet fragrance to Yahweh. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And if he brings a lamb as his sin offering, he brings a female, a perfect one. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it as a sin offering at the place where they slaughter the burnt offering. And the Kohen shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and shall put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour all the blood at the base of the altar. Then he removes all its fat, as the fat of the lamb is removed from the slaughtering of the peace offering. And the Kohen shall burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire to Yahweh. So the Kohen shall make atonement for his sin that he has sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. Waikra, Leviticus, Chapter 5 and when a being sins in that he has heard the voice of swearing and is a witness or has seen or has known but does not reveal it, he shall bear his wickedness. 
or when a being touches any unclean matter or the carcass of an unclean beast or the carcass of unclean livestock or the carcass of unclean creeping creatures and it has been hidden from him he is unclean and guilty or when he touches uncleanness of man any of his uncleanness by which he is unclean and it has been hidden from him when he shall know it then he shall be guilty or when a being swears speaking rashly with his lips to do evil or to do good whatever it is that a man swears rashly with an oath and it has been hidden from him when he shall know it then he shall be guilty of one of these and it shall be when he is guilty of one of these that he shall confess that in which he has sinned and shall bring his guilt offering to Yahweh for his sin which he has sinned a female from the flock a lamb or a female goat as a sin offering and the Kohen shall make atonement for him for his sin and if he is unable to bring a lamb then he shall bring to Yahweh he who has sinned two turtle doves or two young pigeons one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and he shall bring them to the Kohen who shall bring near that which is for the sin offering first and wring off its head from its neck but not sever it and he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar it is a sin offering and he shall prepare the second as a burnt offering according to the right ruling and the Kohen shall make atonement for him for his sin which he has sinned and it shall be forgiven him but if he is unable to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons then he who sinned shall bring for his offering one tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering he puts no oil on it nor does he put any frankincense on it for it is a sin offering and he shall bring it to the Kohen and the Kohen shall take his hand filled with it as a remembrance portion and burn it on the altar according to the offerings made by fire to Yahweh it is a sin offering and the Kohen shall make atonement for him for his sin that he has sinned in any of these and it shall be forgiven him and it shall be the Kohen's like a grain offering and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying when a being commits a trespass and has sinned by mistake against the Kodesh matters of Yahweh then he shall bring to Yahweh as his guilt offering a ram a perfect one from the flock with your valuation in shekels of silver according to the shekel of the Kodesh place as a guilt offering and he shall make good for the sin that he has done against that which is Kodesh and shall add one fifth to it and give it to the Kohen and the Kohen shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering and it shall be forgiven him and when any being sins and has done what is not to be done any of the commands of Yahweh though he knew it not yet he shall be guilty and shall bear his wickedness then he shall bring to the Kohen a ram a perfect one from the flock with your valuation as a guilt offering and the Kohen shall make atonement for his mistake he committed unintentionally though he did not know it and it shall be forgiven him it is a guilt offering he was truly guilty before Yahweh Waikra Leviticus chapter 6 and Yahweh spoke to Moshe saying when any being sins and committed a trespass against Yahweh and has lied to his neighbor about a deposit or about a pledge or about a robbery or shall extort from his neighbor or has found what was lost and has lied concerning it or sworn falsely so that he sins in regard to any one of all these that a man does then it shall be when he sins and shall be guilty that he shall return what he took by robbery or what he has extorted or the deposit which was deposited with him or the lost item which he found or all that about which he swore falsely he shall repay its total value add one fifth more to it and give it to whom it belongs on the day of his guilt offering 
Then he brings his guilt offering to Yahuwah, a ram, a perfect one from the flock, with your valuation as a guilt offering to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him before Yahuwah, and he shall be forgiven for whatever he did that made him guilty. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Command Eheran and his sons, saying, This is the Torah of the burnt offering. This is the burnt offering because it is burned on the altar all night until morning. And the fire of the altar is kept burning on it. And the Kohen shall put on his linen garment and put his linen trousers on his body and shall take up the ashes of the burnt offering which the fire has consumed on the altar and shall put them beside the altar. And he shall take off his garments and put on other garments and shall bring the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. And the fire on the altar is kept burning on it. It is not put out. And the Kohen shall burn wood on it every morning and arrange the burnt offering on it and shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. Fire is continually kept burning on the altar. It is not put out. And this is the Torah of the grain offering. The sons of Eheran shall bring it near before Yahuwah in front of the altar and shall take from it with his hand from the fine flour of the grain offering and from its oil and all the frankincense which is on the grain offering and shall burn it on the altar for a sweet fragrance as its remembrance portion to Yahuwah. Then Eheran and his sons eat the rest of it. It is eaten with unleavened bread in the Kodesh place. They eat it in the courtyard of the tent of appointment. It is not baked with leaven. I have given it to them as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most Kodesh, like the sin offering and the guilt offering. All the males among the children of Eheran eat it, a law forever in your generations concerning the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. All that touches them is to be Kodesh. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, This is the offering of Eheran and his sons, which they bring near to Yahuwah, beginning on the day when he is anointed, one-tenth of an ephah of fine flour, as a daily grain offering, half of it in the morning and half of it at night. It is made on a griddle with oil. Bring it in mixed. Bring the baked portions of the grain offering near a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And the anointed Kohen from among his sons, who is in his place, prepares it, a law forever to Yahuwah. All of it has to be burned, and every grain offering for the Kohen is completely burned. It is not eaten. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aharon and to his sons, saying, this is the Torah of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, the sin offering is slaughtered before Yahuwah. It is most Kodesh. The Kohen who is making atonement eats it. In the Kodesh place it is eaten. In the courtyard of the tent of appointment, all that touches its flesh is to be Kodesh. And when its blood is sprinkled on any garment, you wash that on which it was sprinkled in a Kodesh place. But the earthen vessel in which it is cooked is to be broken. And if it is cooked in a bronze pot, then it is scoured and rinsed in water. Every male among the Kohenim eats it. It is most Kodesh. And no sin offering from which any of the blood is brought into the tent of appointment to make atonement in the Kodesh place is eaten, it is burned with fire. Waigra, Leviticus, Chapter 7. And this is the Torah of the guilt offering. It is most Kodesh. The guilt offering is slaughtered in the place where they slaughter the burnt offering, and its blood is sprinkled on the altar all around. Then he brings from it all its fat, the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them by the loins, and the appendage on the liver, which he removes with the kidneys. And the Kohen shall burn them on the altar as an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a guilt offering. 
Every male among the Kohanim eats it. It is eaten in the Kodesh place. It is most Kodesh. The guilt offering is like the sin offering. There is one Torah for them both. The Kohen who makes atonement with it, it is his. And the Kohen who brings anyone's burnt offering, the skin of the burnt offering which he has brought is the Kohen's, it is his. And every grain offering that is baked in the oven and all that is prepared in the stewing pot or on a griddle is the Kohen's who brings it, it is his. And every grain offering mixed with oil or dry is for all the sons of Eheran, for all alike. And this is the Torah of the slaughtering of peace offerings which is brought to Yahuwah. If he brings it for a thanksgiving, then he shall bring with the slaughtering of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mixed with oil and unleavened thin cakes anointed with oil or cakes of finely blended flour mixed with oil. Besides the cakes, he brings as his offering leavened bread together with the slaughtering of thanksgiving of his peace offering. And from it he shall bring one cake from each offering as a contribution to Yahuwah. To the Kohen who sprinkles the blood of the peace offering, it is his. As for the flesh of the slaughtering of his peace offering for thanksgiving, it is eaten the same day it is offered. He does not leave any of it until morning. And if the offering he brings is a vow or a voluntary offering, it is eaten the same day that he brings his slaughtering, and what is left of it is eaten the next day. But whatever is left of the flesh of the slaughtering on the third day is burned with fire. However, if any of the flesh of his peace offering is eaten at all on the third day, it is not accepted. It is not reckoned to him who brings it. It is unclean to him. And the being who eats of it bears his wickedness. And the flesh that touches that which is unclean is not eaten. It is burned with fire. And as for the clean flesh, all who are clean eat of it. But the being who eats the flesh of the peace offering that belongs to Yahuwah, while he is unclean, that being shall be cut off from his people. And when a being who touches that which is unclean, of the uncleanness of man, or of the uncleanness of beast, or of any unclean swarming creature, and shall eat the flesh of the peace offering that belongs to Yahuwah, that being shall be cut off from his people. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Do not eat any fat of bull or sheep or goat, and the fat of a dead body, and the fat of what is torn is used for any purpose, but you do not eat it at all. For whoever eats the fat of the beast of which men bring as an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, even the being who eats it shall be cut off from his people. And do not eat any blood in any of your dwellings of bird or of beast. Any being who eats any blood, even that being shall be cut off from his people. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, He who brings his peace offering to Yahuwah, brings his offering to Yahuwah from the slaughtering of his peace offering. With his own hands, he brings the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. He brings the fat with the breast to be waved as a wave offering before Yahuwah. And the Kohen shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast shall be Eheron's and his sons. And the right thigh you give to the Kohen as a contribution from your peace offerings. He among the sons of Eheron, who brings the blood of the peace offering and the fat, the right thigh is his for a portion. For the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution I have taken from the children of Israel, from their peace offerings, and I give them to Eheron the Kohen and to his sons, as a law forever from the children of Israel. This is the anointed portion for Aharon, and the anointed portion for his sons, from the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah, on the day when Moshe presented them to serve as Kohanim to Yahuwah, which Yahuwah commanded to be given to them by the children of Israel on the day that he had anointed them, a law forever throughout their generations. 
This is the Torah of the burnt offering, of the grain offering, and of the sin offering, and of the guilt offering, and of the ordinations, and of the peace offering, which Yahuwah commanded Moshe on Mount Sinai, on the day when he commanded the children of Yisrael to bring their offerings to Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. Vayikra, Leviticus, chapter 8. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Take Aharon and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and the bowl of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble all the congregation at the door of the tent of appointment. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded him. And the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of appointment. And Moshe said to the congregation, This is the word Yahuwah commanded to be done. So Moshe brought Aharon and his sons and washed them with water, and put the long shirt on him, and girded him with the girdle, and dressed him in the robe, and put the shoulder garment on him, and girded him with the embroidered band of the shoulder garment, and with it tied the shoulder garment on him and put the breastplate on him, and put the urim and the tumim in the breastplate, and put the turban on his head, and on the turban, on its front, he put the golden plate, the Kodesh sign of dedication, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And Moshe took the anointing oil, and anointed the Mishkan, and all that was in it, and Kadosh them. And he sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all its utensils, and the basin, and its base, to kadosh them. And he poured some of the anointing oil on Aharon's head, and anointed him to kadosh him. And Moshe brought the sons of Aharon, and put long shirts on them, and girded them with girdles, and put turbans on them, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he brought the bull for the sin offering, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull for the sin offering, and it was slaughtered. And Moshe took the blood, and put some on the horns of the altar all around with his finger, and cleansed the altar. And he poured the blood at the base of the altar, and kadosh it, to make atonement for it. And he took all the fat that was on the entrails, and the appendage on the liver, and the two kidneys with their fat, and Moshe burned them on the altar. And the bull, and its skin, and its flesh, and its dung, he burned with fire outside the camp, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he brought the ram of the burnt offering, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and it was slaughtered. And Moshe sprinkled the blood on the altar all around, and he cut the ram into pieces. And Moshe burned the head, and the pieces, and the fat. And he washed the entrails, and the legs in water, and Moshe burned the entire ram on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a sweet fragrance, and an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And he brought the second ram, the ram of ordination, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram, and it was slaughtered. And Moshe took some of its blood and put it on the tip of Aharon's right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, and he brought near the sons of Aharon, and Moshe put some of the blood on the tips of their right ears, and on the thumbs of their right hands, and on the big toes of their right feet. And Moshe sprinkled the blood on the altar all around, and took the fat and the fat tail, and all the fat that was on the entrails, and the appendage on the liver, and the two kidneys and their fat, and the right thigh. And from the basket of unleavened bread that was before Yahuwah, he took one unleavened cake, and a cake of bread anointed with oil, and one thin cake, and put them on the fat and on the right thigh, and placed all these in the hands of Aharon, and in the hands of his sons, and waved them as a wave offering before Yahuwah. Moshe then took them from their hands and burned them on the altar, on the burnt offering. They were ordinations for a sweet fragrance. It was an offering by fire to Yahuwah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it, a wave offering before Yahuwah. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of ordination, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And Moshe took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar and sprinkled it on Aharon 
on his garments and on his sons and on the garments of his sons with him. And he kadosh Aharon, his garments and his sons and the garments of his sons with him. And Moshe said to Aharon and his sons, Cook the flesh at the door of the tent of appointment and eat it there with the bread that is in the basket of the ordinations, as I have commanded, saying, Aharon and his sons are to eat it. Then burn the rest of the flesh and the bread with fire, and do not go outside the door of the tent of appointment for seven days, until the days of your ordination are completed. For he fills your hands for seven days. Yahuwah has commanded to do, as he has done this day, to make atonement for you. And stay at the door of the tent of appointment day and night for seven days. And you shall guard the duty of Yahuwah and not die, for so I have been commanded. And Aharon and his sons did all the words that Yahuwah had commanded by the hand of Moshe. Waikra, Leviticus, Chapter 9 And on the eighth day it came to be that Moshe called Aharon and his sons and the elders of Yisrael. And he said to Aharon, Take for yourself a young bull as a sin offering, and a ram as a burnt offering, a perfect one, and bring them before Yahuwah. And speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, Take a male goat as a sin offering, and a calf, and a lamb, both a year old, perfect ones, as a burnt offering, and a bull and a ram as peace offerings, to slaughter before Yahuwah, and a grain offering mixed with oil, for today Yahuwah shall appear to you. And they took what Moshe commanded before the tent of appointment, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahuwah. And Moshe said, this is the word which Yahuwah commanded you to do, so that the esteem of Yahuwah appears to you. And Moshe said to Aharon, Go to the altar and prepare your sin offering and your burnt offering, and make atonement for yourself and for the people. And make the offering of the people and make atonement for them as Yahuwah has commanded. So Aharon came near to the altar and slaughtered the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aharon brought the blood to him. And he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured the blood at the base of the altar. And the fat and the kidneys and the appendage on the liver of the sin offering he burned on the altar, as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And the flesh and the skin he burned with fire outside the camp. And he slaughtered the burnt offering, and the sons of Aharon presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled on the altar all around. And they presented the burnt offering to him with its pieces and head, and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offering and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people, and slaughtered it and made it a sin offering like the first one. And he brought the burnt offering and made it according to the right ruling. He also brought the grain offering and filled his hand with it and burned it on the altar besides the burnt offering of the morning. And he slaughtered the bull and the ram as peace offerings, which were for the people. And Aharon's sons presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled on the altar all around, and the fat from the bull and the ram, the fat tail and the covering, and the kidneys and the appendage on the liver. And they placed the fat on the breasts, and he burned the fat on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh Aharon waved as a wave offering before Yahuwah, as Moshe had commanded. Aharon then lifted up his hand toward the people, and Barak them, and came down from making the sin offering and the burnt offering, 
and the peace offerings. And Moshe and Aharon went into the tent of appointment and came out and Barach the people. And the esteem of Yahuwah appeared to all the people, and fire came out from before Yahuwah and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. And all the people saw and cried aloud and fell on their faces. Waikra, Leviticus, Chapter 10 And Nadav and Avihu, the sons of Aharon, each took his fire holder and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yahuwah, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from Yahuwah and consumed them, and they died before Yahuwah. Then Moshe said to Aharon, This is what Yahuwah spoke, saying, by those who come near me, let me be Kodesh, and before all the people, let me be esteemed. And Aharon was silent. And Moshe called to Mishael and to Elzaphan, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aharon, and said to them, Come near, take your brothers from before the Kodesh place out of the camp. So they came near and took them by their long shirts out of the camp, as Moshe had said. And Moshe said to Aharon, and to Eleazar, and to Ethamar, his sons, Do not unbind your heads, nor tear your garments, lest you die, and wrath come upon all the people. But let your brothers, all the house of Israel, bewail the burning which Yahuwah has kindled and do not go out from the door of the tent of appointment, lest you die, for the anointing oil of Yahuwah is upon you. And they did according to the word of Moshe. And Yahuwah spoke to Aharon, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tent of appointment, lest you die. A law forever, throughout your generations, so as to make a distinction between the Kodesh and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean, and to teach the children of Israel all the laws which Yahuwah has spoken to them by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe spoke to Aharon and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons, who were left. Take the grain offering that is left over from the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah, and eat it without leaven beside the altar, for it is most Kodesh. And you shall eat it in a Kodesh place, because it is yours by law, and your sons by law, of the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah, for so I have been commanded, and the breast of the wave offering, and the thigh of the contribution you eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you, for they are yours by law, and your sons by law, which are given from the slaughterings of peace offerings of the children of Israel the thigh of the contribution and the breast of the wave offering they bring with the offerings of fat made by fire to bring as a wave offering before Yahuwah. And it shall be yours and your sons with you as a law forever as Yahuwah has commanded. And Moshe diligently looked for the goat of the sin offering and saw it was burned up. And he was wroth with Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aharon, who were left, saying, Why have you not eaten the sin offering in a Kodesh place, since it is most Kodesh, and Elohim has given it to you to bear the wickedness of the congregation, to make atonement for them before Yahweh? See, its blood was not brought inside the Kodesh place, you should have eaten it without fail in a Kodesh place, as I have commanded. And Aharon said to Moshe, See, today they have brought the sin offering, 
and their burnt offering before Yahweh, and these have come upon me? If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been right in the eyes of Yahweh? And when Moshe heard that, it was good in his eyes. Vayikra, Leviticus, chapter 11. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the living creatures which you do eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatever has a split hoof, completely divided, chewing the cud among the beasts, that you do eat. Only these you do not eat among those that chew the cud or those that have a split hoof. The camel, because it chews the cud but does not have a split hoof, it is unclean to you. And the rabbit, because it chews the cud but does not have a split hoof, it is unclean to you. And the hare, because it chews the cud but does not have a split hoof, it is unclean to you. And the pig, though it has a split hoof, completely divided, yet does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. Their flesh you do not eat, and their carcasses you do not touch. They are unclean to you. These you do eat of all that are in the waters. Any one that has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas or in the rivers, that you do eat. But all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, all that move in the waters, or any living creature which is in the waters, they are an abomination to you. They are an abomination to you. Of their flesh you do not eat, and their carcasses you abominate. All that have not fins or scales in the waters is an abomination to you. And these you do abominate among the birds. They are not eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the vulture and the black vulture and the hawk and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kind and the ostrich and the nighthawk and the seagull and the hawk after its kind and the little owl and the fisher owl and the great owl and the white owl, and the pelican, and the carrion vulture, and the stork, the heron after its kind, and the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that creep on all fours is an abomination to you. Only these you do eat of every flying insect that creeps on all fours, those which have jointed legs above their feet with which to leap on the earth. These of them you do eat, the locust after its kind, and the destroying locust after its kind, and the cricket after its kind, and the grasshopper after its kind. But all other flying insects which have four feet is an abomination to you. And by these you are made unclean. Anyone touching the carcass of any of them is unclean until evening. And anyone picking up part of the carcass of any of them has to wash his garments and shall be unclean until evening. Every beast that has a split hoof not completely divided or does not chew the cud is unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass is unclean. And whatever goes on its paws among all the creatures that go on all fours, those are unclean to you. Anyone who touches their carcass is unclean until evening. And he who picks up their carcass has to wash his garments and shall be unclean until evening. They are unclean to you. And these are unclean to you among the creeping creatures that creep on the earth, the mole and the mouse and the tortoise after its kind, and the gecko and the land crocodile and the sand reptile and the sand lizard and the chameleon. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Anyone who touches them when they are dead becomes unclean until evening. And whatever any of them in its dead state falls upon becomes unclean, whether it is any wooden object or garment or skin or sack. Any object in which work is done, it is put in water. 
and it shall be unclean until evening, then it shall be clean. Any earthen vessel into which any of them falls, whatever is in it becomes unclean and you break it. Any of the food which might be eaten on which water comes becomes unclean, and any drink which might be drunk from it becomes unclean, and on whatever their carcass falls becomes unclean. An oven or cooking range, it is broken down. They are unclean and are unclean to you. But a fountain or a well, a collection of water is clean. But whatever touches their carcass is unclean. And when their carcass falls on any planting seed which is to be sown, it is clean. But when any water is put on the seed and any part of any such carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. And when any of the beasts which are yours for food dies, he who touches its carcass becomes unclean until evening. And he who eats of its carcass has to wash his garments and shall be unclean until evening. And he who picks up its carcass has to wash his garments and shall be unclean until evening. And every creeping creature that creeps on the earth is an abomination. It is not eaten. Whatever crawls on its stomach and whatever goes on all fours and whatever has many feet among all creeping creatures that creep on the earth, these you do not eat, for they are an abomination. Do not make yourselves abominable with any creeping creature that creeps, and do not make yourselves unclean with them, lest you be defiled by them. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim, and you shall kadosh yourselves, and you shall be kodesh, for I am kodesh. And do not defile yourselves with any creeping creature that creeps on the earth. For I am Yahweh, who is bringing you up out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. And you shall be Kodesh, for I am Kodesh. This is the Torah of the beasts and the birds and every living creature that moves in the waters and of every creature that creeps on the earth to make a distinction between the unclean and the clean and between the living creature that is eaten and the living creature that is not eaten. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 12. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, when a woman has conceived and has given birth to a male child, then she shall be unclean seven days, as in the days of her monthly separation she is unclean. And on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin is circumcised. As she remains in the blood of her cleansing thirty-three days, she does not touch whatever is Kodesh, and she does not come into the Mikdash until the days of her cleansing are completed. But if she gives birth to a female child, then she shall be unclean for two weeks, as in her monthly separation, and she remains in the blood of her cleansing for sixty-six days. And when the days of her cleansing are completed, for a son or for a daughter, she brings to the Kohen a lamb a year old as a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering to the door of the tent of appointment. And he shall bring it before Yahuwah and make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the flow of her blood. This is the Torah for her who has given birth to a male or a female. And if she is not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, one as a burnt offering and the other as a sin offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 13. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, When a man has on the skin of his body a swelling, a scab, or a bright spot, and it shall become on the skin of his body like a leprous infection, then he shall be brought to Aharon, the Kohen, or to one of his sons, the Kohenim. And the Kohen shall look at the infection on the skin of the body, and if the hair on the infection has turned white, 
and the infection appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a leprous infection, and the Kohen shall look at him and pronounce him unclean. But if the bright spot is white on the skin of his body and does not appear to be deeper than the skin, and its hair has not turned white, then the Kohen shall shut up the infected one seven days. And the Kohen shall look at him on the seventh day and see if the infection appears to be as it was, and the infection has not spread on the skin, then the Kohen shall shut him up another seven days. And the Kohen shall look at him again on the seventh day and see if the infection has darkened and the infection has not spread on the skin, then the Kohen shall pronounce him clean. It is a scab, and he shall wash his garments and be clean. But if the scab spreads further over the skin, after he has been seen by the Kohen for his cleansing, he shall be seen by the Kohen again. And the Kohen shall look and see. If the scab has spread on the skin, then the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is leprosy. When the infection of leprosy is on a man, then he shall be brought to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall look and see. If the swelling on the skin is white, and it has turned the hair white, and there is a spot of raw flesh in the swelling, it is an old leprosy on the skin of his body, and the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. He does not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if leprosy breaks out all over the skin, and the leprosy shall cover all the skin of the infected one, from his head to his foot, wherever the Kohen looks, then the Kohen shall look and see. If the leprosy has covered all his body, he shall pronounce the infected one clean. It has all turned white. He is clean. But the day raw flesh appears on him, he is unclean. And the Kohen shall look at the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean. The raw flesh is unclean, it is leprosy. Or when the raw flesh changes and turns white again, he shall come to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall look at him and see if the infection has turned white, then the Kohen shall pronounce the infected one clean. He is clean. And when the body has a boil in the skin, and it is healed, and in the place of the boil there comes a white swelling, or a bright spot, reddish white, then it shall be seen by the Kohen. And the Kohen shall look and see, if it appears deeper than the skin, and its hair has turned white, the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous infection, which has broken out of the boil. But if the Kohen looks at it and sees no white hairs in it, and it is not deeper than the skin, but has faded, then the Kohen shall shut him up seven days. And if it has spread further over the skin, then the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous infection. But if the bright spot stays in its place, it has not spread, it is the scar of the boil, and the Kohen shall pronounce him clean. Or when the body receives a burn on its skin by fire, and the raw flesh of the burn shall become a bright spot, reddish white or white, then the Kohen shall look at it and see. If the hair of the bright spot has turned white, and it appears deeper than the skin, it is leprosy broken out in the burn, and the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean, it is a leprous infection. But if the Kohen looks at it and sees there are no white hairs in the bright spot, and it is not deeper than the skin, but has faded, then the Kohen shall shut him up seven days. And the Kohen shall look at him on the seventh day. If it spreads further over the skin, then the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprous infection. But if the bright spot stays in its place and has not spread on the skin, but has faded, it is a swelling from the burn. And the Kohen shall pronounce him clean, for it is the scar from the burn. And when a man or a woman has an infection on the head or in the beard, then the Kohen shall look at the infection and see. If it appears deeper than the skin, and there is thin yellow hair in it, then the Kohen shall pronounce him unclean. It is an eruption, a leprosy of the head or beard. But when the Kohen looks at the infection of the eruption and sees that it does not appear deeper than the skin and there is no black hair in it, then the Kohen shall shut up the infection of the eruption seven days. And on the seventh day, the Kohen shall look at the infection and see if the eruption has not spread and there is no yellow hair in it and the eruption does not appear deeper than the skin. 
then he shall shave himself, but the eruption he does not shave. And the Kohen shall shut up the eruption another seven days. And on the seventh day, the Kohen shall look at the eruption and see. If the eruption has not spread over the skin and does not appear deeper than the skin, then the Kohen shall pronounce him clean. And he shall wash his garments, and he shall be clean. But if the eruption spreads further over the skin after his cleansing, then the Kohen shall look at him and see. If the eruption has spread over the skin, the Kohen need not seek for yellow hair. He is unclean. But if the eruption appears to have stayed, and there is black hair grown up in it, the eruption has healed. He is clean, and the Kohen shall pronounce him clean. And when a man or a woman has bright spots on the skin of the body, white bright spots, then the Kohen shall look and see. If the bright spots on the skin of the body are dull white, it is a white spot that grows on the skin, he is clean. And when a man loses the hair of his head, he is bald, he is clean. And if the hair has fallen from his forehead, he is bald on the forehead, he is clean. And when there is on the bald head or bald forehead a reddish white infection, it is leprosy breaking out on his bald head or his bald forehead. And the Kohen shall look at it and see if the swelling of the infection is reddish white on his bald head or on his bald forehead as the appearance of leprosy on the skin of the body he is a leprous man. He is unclean. The cone shall pronounce him unclean without fail. His infection is on his head. As for the leper who has the infection, his garments are torn and his head is uncovered and he has to cover his upper lip and cry, Unclean! Unclean! He is unclean all the days he has the infection. He is unclean. He is unclean, and he dwells alone. His dwelling place is outside the camp. And when a garment has an infection of leprosy in it, in a woolen garment, or in a linen garment, or in the warp, or in the weft of linen or wool, or in leather, or in any leather work, and the infection shall be greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the leather, or in the warp, or in the weft, or in any leather object, it is an infection of leprosy and shall be shown to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall look at the infection and shut up the infection seven days. And he shall look at the infection on the seventh day. And when the infection has spread in the garment or in the warp or in the weft or in the leather or any leather work, the infection is an active leprosy. It is unclean. And he shall burn that garment or the warp or the weft, in wool, or in linen, or any leather object in which the infection is, for it is an active leprosy. It is burned with fire. But if the Kohen looks and sees that the infection has not spread in the garment, or in the warp, or in the weft, or in any leather object, then the Kohen shall give command, and they shall wash that in which the infection is and he shall shut it up another seven days. And the Kohen shall look at the infection after it has been washed and see if the infection has not changed its appearance, though the infection has not spread, it is unclean and burn it in the fire. It is eaten away in its inside or outside. And if the Kohen shall look and see that the infection has faded after washing it, then he shall tear it out of the garment or out of the warp or out of the weft, or out of the leather. And if it is still seen in the garment, or in the warp, or in the weft, or in any leather object, it is a spreading infection. Burn it with fire, that in which the infection is. And if you wash the garment, or the warp, or the weft, or any leather object, if the infection has disappeared from it, then it shall be washed a second time, and shall be clean. This is the Torah of the infection of leprosy in a garment of wool or linen or in the warp or in the weft or in any leather object to pronounce it clean or to pronounce it unclean. Waigra, Leviticus, 
Chapter 14. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, This shall be the Torah of the leper for the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought to the Kohen, and the Kohen shall go out of the camp, and the Kohen shall look and see. If the leprosy is healed in the leper, then the Kohen shall command, and he shall take for him who is to be cleansed two live and clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the Kohen shall command, and he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. Let him take the live bird, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be cleansed from the leprosy, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the live bird loose in the open field. And he who is to be cleansed shall wash his garments, and shall shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water, and shall be clean. Then after that he comes into the camp, but shall stay outside his tent seven days. And on the seventh day it shall be that he shaves all the hair off his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shaves off. And he shall wash his garments, and wash his body in water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he takes two male lambs, perfect ones, and one ewe lamb, a year old, a perfect one, and three-tenth parts of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, and one log of oil. And the Kohen, who is cleansing, shall present the man who is to be cleansed with these, before Yahweh at the door of the tent of appointment. And the Kohen shall take one male lamb and bring it as a guilt offering and the log of oil and wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall slaughter the lamb in the place where he slaughters the sin offering and the burnt offering in a Kodesh place. For the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the Kohen. It is most Kodesh. And the Kohen shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and the Kohen shall put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. And the Kohen shall take some of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the Kohen shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle some of the oil with his finger seven times before Yahweh. And of the rest of the oil in his hand, the Kohen puts some on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the Kohen's hand, he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him before Yahweh. And the Kohen shall make the sin offering, and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterwards he slaughters the burnt offering. And the Kohen shall offer the burnt offering, and the grain offering, on the altar. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor, and is unable to afford it, then he shall take one male lamb as a guilt offering to be waved, to make atonement for him, and one-tenth part of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, such as he is able to afford. And one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. And he shall bring them to the Kohen on the eighth day for his cleansing, to the door of the tent of appointment before Yahweh. And the Kohen shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the Kohen shall wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh. And he shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering. And the Kohen shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. Then the Kohen pours some of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. And the Kohen shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before Yahweh. And the Kohen shall put some of the oil that is in his hand on the tip of the right ear of him who is to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the guilt offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the Kohen's hand, he puts on the head of him who is to be cleansed to make atonement for him before Yahweh. 
and he shall prepare one of the turtle doves or young pigeons, such as he is able to afford, that which he is able to afford, the one is a sin offering, and the other is a burnt offering with the grain offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him who is to be cleansed before Yahweh. This is the Torah for one who had an infection of leprosy, who is unable to afford for his cleansing. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, When you come into the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put a plague of leprosy in a house in the land of your possession, then shall the one who owns the house come and inform the Kohen, saying, It seems to me that there is some plague in the house. And the Kohen shall command, and they shall empty the house before the Kohen goes in to look at the plague, so that all that is in the house is not made unclean. And after that, the Kohen goes in to look at the house, and he shall look at the plague and see. If the plague is on the walls of the house with sunken places, greenish or reddish, which appear to be deep in the wall, then the Kohen shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the Kohen shall come again on the seventh day and look and see. If the plague has spread on the walls of the house, then the Kohen shall command, and they shall remove the stones with the plague in them, and they shall throw them outside the city into an unclean place, while he lets the house be scraped inside all around, and the dust that they scrape off they shall pour out in an unclean place outside the city. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones and take other mortar and plaster the house. And if the plague comes back and breaks out in the house after he has removed the stones, after he has scraped the house and after it is plastered, then the Kohen shall come and look and see. If the plague has spread in the house, it is an active leprosy in the house. It is unclean. And he shall break down the house, its stones and its timber, and all the plaster of the house. And he shall bring them outside the city to an unclean place. And he who goes into the house all the days while it is shut up becomes unclean until evening. And he who lies down in the house has to wash his garments. And he who eats in the house has to wash his garments. However, if the Kohen indeed comes in and looks at it and sees that the plague has not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the Kohen shall pronounce the house clean because the plague is healed. And to cleanse the house, he shall take two birds and cedar wood and scarlet and hyssop, and he shall kill one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood and the hyssop and the scarlet and the live bird and dip them in the blood of the slain bird and in the running water and shall sprinkle the house seven times. He shall thus cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and the running water and the live bird and with the cedar wood and with the hyssop and with the scarlet and he shall let the live bird loose outside the city in the open field and shall make atonement for the house and it shall be clean. This is the Torah for any infection of leprosy and eruption and for leprosy of a garment and of a house and for a swelling and for a scab and for a bright spot to teach when it is unclean and when it is clean. This is the Torah of leprosy. Waikra. Leviticus, chapter 15. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe and to Aharon, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his flesh, his discharge is unclean. And this is his uncleanness in regard to his discharge. Whether his flesh runs with his discharge, or his flesh is stopped up by his discharge, it is his uncleanness. Any bed becomes unclean on which he who has the discharge lies, and any object on which he sits becomes unclean. And anyone who touches his bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And he who sits on any object on which he who has the discharge sat has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And he who touches the flesh of him who has the discharge has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. 
And when he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides becomes unclean. And whoever touches any of that which was under him is unclean until evening. And he who is carrying them up has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And anyone whom he who has the discharge touches without rinsing his hands in water shall wash his garments and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And the earthen vessel, which he who has the discharge touches, has to be broken, and every wooden vessel has to be rinsed in water. And when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing, and shall wash his garments, and shall bathe his flesh in running water, and be clean. And on the eighth day he takes for himself two turtle doves or two young pigeons, and shall come before Yahweh to the door of the tent of appointment, and shall give them to the Kohen. And the Kohen shall prepare them, the one as a sin offering, and the other as a burnt offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him before Yahweh, because of his discharge. And when a man has an emission of semen, then he shall wash all his flesh in water, and be unclean until evening. And any garment and any leather on which there is semen shall also be washed with water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman lies with a man and there is an emission of semen, they both shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her flesh is blood, she has to be in her separation for seven days. And whoever touches her is unclean until evening. And whatever she lies on during her separation is unclean. And whatever she sits on is unclean. And anyone who touches her bed has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches any object that she sat on has to wash his garments and shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And if it is on the bed or on any object on which she sits, when he touches it, he is unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her at all, and her monthly flow is on him, he shall be unclean seven days. And any bed he lies on is unclean. And when a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at the time of her monthly separation, or when she discharges beyond her usual time of monthly separation. All the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her monthly separation. She is unclean. Any bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge is to her as the bed of her monthly separation. And whatever she sits on is unclean as the uncleanness of her monthly separation. And anyone who touches them is unclean and shall wash his garments, and shall bathe in water, and be unclean until evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, then she shall count for herself seven days, and after that she is clean. And on the eighth day she takes for herself two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and shall bring them to the Kohen, to the door of the tent of appointment. And the Kohen shall prepare the one as a sin offering, and the other as a burnt offering, and the Kohen shall make atonement for her before Yahweh for the discharge of her uncleanness. Thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness when they defile my Mishkan, which is in their midst. This is the Torah for one who has a discharge, and for him who emits semen and is unclean thereby, and for her who is sick in her monthly separation, and for one who has a discharge, either man or woman, and for him who lies with an unclean woman. Waigra, Leviticus, Chapter 16 And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe after the death of the two sons of Aharon, when they drew near before Yahuwah and died. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Speak to Aharon your brother, 
not to come in at all times to the Kodesh place inside the veil, before the lid of atonement, which is on the ark, lest he die, because I appear in the cloud above the lid of atonement. With this, Aharon should come into the Kodesh place, with the blood of a young bull as a sin offering, and of a ram as a burnt offering. He should put on the Kodesh linen long shirt with linen trousers on his flesh and gird himself with a linen girdle and be dressed with the linen turban. They are Kodesh garments. And he shall bathe his body in water and shall put them on. And from the congregation of the children of Yisrael, he takes two male goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. And Aharon shall bring the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and let them stand before Yahweh at the door of the tent of appointment. And Aharon shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for Yahweh and the other lot for Azazel. And Aharon shall bring the goat on which the lot for Yahweh fell and shall prepare it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot for Azazel fell is caused to stand alive before Yahweh to make atonement upon it, to send it into the wilderness to Azazel. And Aharon shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall slaughter the bull as the sin offering, which is for himself and shall take a fire holder filled with burning coals of fire from the altar before Yahweh, with his hands filled with sweet incense beaten fine, and shall bring it inside the veil. And he shall put the incense on the fire before Yahweh, and the cloud of incense shall cover the lid of atonement, which is on the witness, lest he die. And he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the lid of atonement on the east side, also in front of the lid of atonement, he sprinkles some of the blood with his finger seven times. And he shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, and shall bring its blood inside the veil, and shall do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the lid of atonement and in front of the lid of atonement. And he shall make atonement for the Kodesh place, because of the uncleanness of the children of Yisrael and because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so he does for the tent of appointment, which is dwelling with them in the midst of their uncleanness. And no man should be in the tent of appointment when he goes in to make atonement in the Kodesh place until he comes out. And he shall make atonement for himself and for his household and for all the assembly of Yisrael. And he shall go out to the altar that is before Yahweh and make atonement for it. And he shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. And he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his fingers seven times and cleanse it and kadosh it from the uncleanness of the children of Yisrael. And when he has finished atoning for the Kodesh place and the tent of appointment and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. <laughs> then Aharon shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat and shall confess over it all the wickedness of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins and shall put them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a fit man. And the goat shall bear on itself all their wickedness to a land cut off. Thus he shall send the goat away into the wilderness. Aharon shall then come into the tent of appointment and shall take off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the Kodesh place and shall leave them there. And he shall bathe his body in water in the Kodesh place and shall put on his garments and shall come out and prepare his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people and burn the fat of the sin offering on the altar. And he who sent away the goat to Azazel washes his garments and shall bathe his body in water, and afterward he comes into the camp. And the bull for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the Kodesh place, is brought outside the camp. And they shall burn their skins, and their flesh, and their dung with fire. 
And he who burns them washes his garments and shall bathe his body in water, and afterward he comes into the camp. And this shall be for you a law forever. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you afflict your beings and do no work, the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For on that day he makes atonement for you, to cleanse you, to be clean from all your sins before Yahweh. It is a Shabbat of rest for you, and you shall afflict your beings, a law forever. And the Kohen who is anointed and ordained to serve as Kohen in his father's place shall make atonement and shall put on the linen garments, the Kodesh garments, and he shall make atonement for the Kodesh Mikdash, and make atonement for the tent of appointment and for the altar, and make atonement for the Kohenim and for all the people of the assembly. And this shall be for you a law forever, to make atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 17. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron, to his sons, and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, This is the word which Yahuwah has commanded, saying, Any man from the house of Israel who slaughters a bull or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or who slaughters it outside the camp, and does not bring it to the door of the tent of appointment to bring an offering to Yahuwah before the Mishkan of Yahuwah. Blood guilt is reckoned to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people, in order that the children of Israel bring their slaughterings, which they slaughter in the open field. And they shall bring them to Yahuwah at the door of the tent of appointment to the Kohen, and slaughter them as peace offerings to Yahuwah. And the Kohen shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of Yahuwah at the door of the tent of appointment, and shall burn the fat for a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And let them no longer slaughter their slaughterings to demons after whom they hoard. This is a law forever for them throughout their generations. And say to them, Any man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among you, who offers a burnt offering or slaughtering, and does not bring it to the door of the tent of appointment, to do it to Yahuwah, that man shall be cut off from among his people. And any man of the house of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn among you, who eats any blood, I shall turn my face against that being who eats blood, and shall cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the life. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, No being among you eats blood, nor does any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. And any man from the children of Israel or from the strangers who sojourn among you, who hunts and catches any beast or bird which is eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust, for it is the life of all flesh. Its blood is for its life. And I said to the children of Israel, Do not eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood. Anyone eating it is cut off. And any being who eats a carcass or what was torn by a beast, be he a native or a stranger, he shall wash his garments and bathe in water and shall be unclean until evening. Then he shall be clean. And if he does not wash or bathe his body, then he shall bear his wickedness. Vaigra, Leviticus, chapter 18. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. 
do not do as they do in the land of Mitzrayim where you dwelt. And do not do as they do in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you and do not walk in their laws. Do my right rulings and guard my laws to walk in them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. And you shall guard my laws and my right rulings, which a man does and lives by them. I am Yahweh. No one is to approach any one of his own flesh to uncover his nakedness. I am Yahweh. The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother you do not uncover. She is your mother. You do not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your father's wife you do not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or elsewhere, their nakedness you do not uncover. The nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, their nakedness you do not uncover, for theirs is your own nakedness. The nakedness of your father's wife's daughter brought forth by your father, she is your sister. You do not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your father's sister, you do not uncover. She is your father's flesh. The nakedness of your mother's sister, you do not uncover, for she is your mother's flesh. The nakedness of your father's brother, you do not uncover. You do not approach his wife. She is your aunt. The nakedness of your daughter-in-law, you do not uncover. She is your son's wife. You do not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of your brother's wife, you do not uncover. It is your brother's nakedness. The nakedness of a woman and her daughter, you do not uncover. Nor do you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are her relatives. It is wickedness. And do not take a woman as a rival to her sister to uncover her nakedness while the other is alive. And do not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness in her monthly separation of uncleanness. And do not have intercourse with the wife of your neighbor to defile yourself with her. And do not give any of your offspring to pass through to Molech. And do not profane the name of your Elohim. I am Yahweh. And do not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And do not have intercourse with any beast to defile yourself with it. And a woman does not stand before a beast to mate with it. It is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves with all these, for by all these the nations are defiled, which I am driving out before you. Thus the land became defiled. Therefore I punished it for its wickedness, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you, you shall guard my laws and my right rulings, and not do any of these abominations, the native nor stranger who sojourns among you. Because the men of the land who were before you have done all these abominations, and thus the land became defiled. So let not the land vomit you out for defiling it, as it vomited out the nations that were before you. For whoever does any of these abominations, those beings who do them shall be cut off from among their people. And you shall guard my charge, so as not to do any of these abominable practices which were done before you, so as not to defile yourselves by them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 19. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say to them, Be Kodesh, for I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am Kodesh. Each one of you should revere his mother and his father, and guard my Shabbatot. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not turn to idols, and do not make yourselves molded mighty ones. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. And when you bring a peace offering to Yahweh, bring it for your acceptance. It is eaten the same day you slaughter it, 
and on the next day, and that which is left on the third day is burned with fire. So if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable, it is not accepted, and he who eats it bears his wickedness, because he has profaned the Kodesh offering of Yahuwah, and that being shall be cut off from his people. And when you reap the harvest of your land, do not completely reap the corners of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. And do not glean your vineyard or gather every grape of your vineyard. Leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not steal, do not lie, do not deceive one another. And do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. Do not oppress your neighbor and do not rob the wages of him who is hired. It is not to remain with you all night until morning. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but revere your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. Do no unrighteousness in right ruling. Do not be partial to the poor or favor the face of the great but rightly rule your neighbor in righteousness. Do not go slandering among your people. Do not stand against the blood of your neighbor. I am Yahuwah. Do not hate your brother in your heart. Reprove your neighbor for certain and bear no sin because of him. Do not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the children of your people. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Guard my laws. Do not let your livestock mate with another kind. Do not sow your field with mixed seed, and do not put a garment woven of two sorts of thread upon you. And when a man has intercourse with a woman who is a female servant, engaged to a man, and who has not at all been ransomed, nor redeemed, nor freedom given, there should be an inquiry. But they are not put to death, because she was not free. And he shall bring his guilt offering to Yahuwah, to the door of the tent of appointment, a ram as a guilt offering. And the Kohen shall make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before Yahuwah, for his sin which he has done. And the sin which he has sinned shall be forgiven him. And when you come into the land, and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall reckon their fruit as uncircumcised. For three years it is as uncircumcised to you, it is not eaten. And in the fourth year, all its fruit is Kodesh, praises to Yahuwah. And in the fifth year, you eat its fruit, so that it increases its yield to you. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not eat with the blood. Do not practice divination or magic. Do not round the corner of your head, nor destroy the corner of your beard. And do not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor put tattoo marks on you. I am Yahuwah. Do not profane your daughter by making her a whore, so that the land does not whore, and the land becomes filled with wickedness. Guard my Shabbatot, and reverence my Mikdash. I am Yahuwah. Do not turn to mediums, and do not seek after spiritists to be defiled by them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Rise up before the gray-headed, and you shall favor the face of an old man, and shall revere your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. And when a stranger sojourns with you in your land, do not oppress him. Let the stranger who dwells among you be to you as the native among you and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do no unrighteousness in right ruling, in measurement of length, in weight, or in measuring liquids. Have right scales, right weights, a right epha, and a right hin. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And you shall guard all my laws and all my right rulings and do them. I am Yahuwah. Waikra, Leviticus, Chapter 20. 
And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Say to the children of Israel, Any man of the children of Israel, or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his offspring to Molech, shall certainly be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I, I shall turn my face against that man, and shall cut him off from the midst of his people, because he is given of his offspring to Malech, so as to defile my Mikdash and to profane my Kodesh name. And if the people of the land at all hide their eyes from the man as he gives any of his offspring to Malech, and they do not kill him, then I shall turn my face against that man and against his clan, and shall cut him off. And all who go whoring after him, even go whoring after Malach from the midst of their people. And the being who turns to mediums and to spiritists to go whoring after them, I shall turn my face against that being and cut him off from the midst of his people. And you shall kadosh yourselves and shall be Kodesh, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. And you shall guard my laws and do them. I am Yahweh who kadosh you. For everyone who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother. His blood is on him. And a man who commits adultery with the wife of another man, who commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, the adulterer and the adulteress shall certainly be put to death. And a man who lies with the wife of his father has uncovered the nakedness of his father. Both of them shall certainly be put to death. Their blood is upon them. And a man who lies with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall certainly be put to death. They have made confusion. Their blood is upon them. And a man who lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have done an abomination. They shall certainly be put to death. Their blood is upon them. And a man who marries a woman and her mother, it is wickedness. They are burned with fire, both he and they, that there be no wickedness in your midst. And a man who has intercourse with a beast, he shall certainly be put to death, and the beast you kill. And a woman who approaches any beast and mates with it, you shall kill the woman and the beast. They shall certainly be put to death. Their blood is upon them. And a man who takes his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and sees her nakedness, and she sees his nakedness, it is a reproach, and they shall be cut off before the eyes of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness, he bears his wickedness. And a man who lies with a woman during her sickness and uncovers her nakedness, he has laid bare her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood. Both of them shall be cut off from the midst of their people. And do not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, nor of your father's sister, for that is laying bare one's own flesh. They bear their wickedness. And a man who lies with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness. They bear their sin, they die childless. And a man who takes his brother's wife, it is uncleanness. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They are childless. And you shall guard all my laws and all my right rulings, and do them, so that the land where I am bringing you to dwell does not vomit you out. And do not walk in the laws of the nation which I am driving out before you, for they do all these, and therefore I loathe them. But I say to you, you are going to possess their land, and I myself give it to you to possess it, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who has separated you from the peoples. And you shall make a distinction between clean beasts and unclean, and between unclean birds and clean. And do not make yourselves abominable by beast or by bird, or whatever creeps on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And you shall be Kodesh to me, for I, Yahweh, am Kodesh, and have separated you from the peoples to be mine. And a man or a woman in whom there is a medium or who are spiritists shall certainly be put to death. They are to stone them with stones. Their blood is upon them.
Vayigra, Leviticus, chapter 21. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Speak to the Kohanim, the sons of Aharon, and say to them, No one is to be defiled for the dead among his people, except for his relatives who are nearest to him, for his mother, and for his father, and for his son, and for his daughter, and for his brother, and for his maiden sister who is near to him, who has had no husband, for her he is defiled. A leader does not defile himself among his people to profane himself. They do not make any bald place on their heads, and they do not shave the corner of their beard, and they do not make a cutting in their flesh. They are Kodesh to their Elohim, and do not profane the name of their Elohim. For they bring the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, and the bread of their Elohim, and shall be Kodesh. They do not take a woman who is a whore or a defiled woman, and they do not take a woman put away from her husband, for he is Kodesh to his Elohim. And you shall Kadosh him, for he brings the bread of your Elohim. He is Kodesh to you, for I, Yahweh, who Kadosh you, am Kodesh. And when the daughter of any Kohen profanes herself by whoring, she profanes her father. She is burned with fire. And the Kohen Haggadah among his brothers, on whose head the anointing oil was poured, and who is ordained to wear the garments, does not unbind his head, nor tear his garments, nor come near any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or his mother, nor go out of the Mikdash, nor profane the Mikdash of his Elohim. For the sign of dedication of the anointing oil of his Elohim is upon him. I am Yahuwah and let him take a wife in her maidenhood. A widow or one put away or a defiled woman or a whore, these he does not take, but a maiden of his own people he takes as a wife. And he does not profane his offspring among his people, for I am Yahuwah who kadosh him. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Eheron, saying, no man of your offspring throughout their generations who has any defect is to draw near to bring the bread of his Elohim. For any man who has a defect is not to draw near. A man blind or one lame or disfigured or deformed, a man who has a broken foot or broken hand or is a hunchback or a dwarf or a man who has a defect in his eye or eczema or scab or is a eunuch. No man among the offspring of Aharon the Kohen who has a defect is to come near to bring the offerings made by fire to Yahuwah. He has a defect, he does not come near to bring the bread of his Elohim. He eats the bread of his Elohim, both the most Kodesh and the Kodesh. Only he does not go near the veil or approach the altar because he has a defect, lest he profanes my Mikdashim. For I am Yahuwah who Kadosh them. Thus Moshe spoke to Aharon and his sons, and to all the children of Yisrael. Vayigra, Leviticus, chapter 22. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aharon and his sons, that they separate themselves from the Kodesh offerings of the children of Israel, and that they do not profane my Kodesh name in what they Kadosh to me. I am Yahuwah. Say to them, Any man of all your offspring throughout your generations who draws near the Kodesh offerings which the children of Israel Kadosh to Yahuwah, while he has uncleanness upon him, that being shall be cut off from before me. I am Yahuwah. Any man of the offspring of Aaron who is a leper or has a discharge does not eat the Kodesh offerings until he is clean. And whoever touches what is rendered unclean by a corpse or a man who has had an emission of semen or a man who touches any creeping creature by which he would be made unclean or any being by whom he would become unclean, even any of his uncleanness, the being who has touched it shall be unclean until evening and does not eat the Kodesh offerings, but shall bathe his body in water. And when the sun goes down, he shall be clean. And afterward, eat the Kodesh offerings, because it is his food. 
He does not eat that which dies or is torn by beasts, becoming unclean by it. I am Yahweh, and they shall guard my charge, lest they bear sin for it and die thereby when they profane it. I, Yahweh, Kadosh them. And no stranger eats the Kodesh offering. A sojourner with the Kohen or a hired servant does not eat the Kodesh offering. But when the Kohen buys a being with his silver, he eats of it. And one who is born in his house eats his food. And when a Kohen's daughter is married to a stranger, she does not eat of the Kodesh offerings. But when a Kohen's daughter is a widow or put away and has no child and has returned to her father's house as in her youth, she eats her father's food, but no stranger eats of it. And when a man eats the Kodesh offering by mistake, then he shall give a Kodesh offering to the Kohen and add one-fifth to it. And do not profane the Kodesh offerings of the children of Israel, which they lift up to Yahuwah, or allow them to bear the wickedness of trespass when they eat their Kodesh offerings. For I am Yahuwah who Kadosh them. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aharon and his sons and to all the children of Israel, and say to them, any man of the house of Israel or of the strangers in Israel who brings his offering for any of his vows or for any of his voluntary offerings which they bring to Yahuwah as a burnt offering for your acceptance is a male, a perfect one from the cattle, from the sheep or from the goats. Whatever has a defect you do not bring for it is not acceptable for you. And when a man brings a peace offering to Yahweh to complete a vow or a voluntary offering from the cattle or the sheep, it is to be perfect to be accepted. Let there be no defect in it. Those blind or broken or having a cut or have an ulcer or eczema or scabs, you do not bring to Yahweh, nor make an offering by fire of them on the altar to Yahweh. As for a bull or a lamb that has any limb deformed or dwarfed, you do prepare as a voluntary offering, but for a vow it is not accepted. Do not bring to Yahuwah what is bruised or crushed or torn or cut, nor do it in your land. And from a son of a stranger's hand, you do not bring any of these as the bread of your Elohim, for their corruption is in them and defects are in them, they are not acceptable for you. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, When a bull or a sheep or a goat is born, it shall be seven days with its mother. And from the eighth day and thereafter, it is acceptable as an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. But do not slaughter a cow or a sheep and its young on the same day. And when you bring a slaughtering of thanksgiving to Yahuwah, Bring it for your acceptance. It is eaten that same day. Leave none of it till morning. I am Yahuwah. And you shall guard my commands and do them. I am Yahuwah. And do not profane my Kodesh name. And I shall be Kodesh among the children of Israel. I am Yahuwah who Kadosh you, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. I am Yahweh. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 23. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the appointed times of Yahuwah, which you are to proclaim as Kodesh gatherings, my appointed times are these. Six days work is done, but the seventh day is a Shabbat of rest, a Kodesh gathering. You do no work, it is a Shabbat to Yahuwah in all your dwellings. These are the appointed times of Yahuwah, Kodesh gatherings, which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, between the evenings, is the Pesach to Yahuwah. And on the fifteenth day of this month is the festival of Matzoth to Yahuwah. Seven days you eat unleavened bread. On the first day you have a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. And you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah for seven days. 
On the seventh day as a Kodesh gathering, you do no servile work. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, and shall reap its harvest, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the Kohen, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahuwah for your acceptance. On the morrow after the Shabbat, the Kohen waves it. And on that day, when you wave the sheaf, you shall prepare a male lamb a year old, a perfect one, as a burnt offering to Yahuwah. And its grain offering, two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering made by fire to Yahuwah, a sweet fragrance, and its drink offering, one-fourth of a heen of wine. And you do not eat bread or roasted grain or fresh grain until the same day that you have brought an offering to your Elohim, a law forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. And from the morrow after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, you shall count for yourselves seven completed Shabbatoth. Until the morrow after the seventh Shabbat, you count fifty days. Then you shall bring a new grain offering to Yahuwah. Bring from your dwellings for a wave offering, two of bread, of two-tenth parts of fine flour they are, baked with leaven, first fruits to Yahuwah. And besides the bread, you shall bring seven lambs a year old, perfect ones, and one young bull and two rams. They are a burnt offering to Yahuwah with their grain offering and their drink offerings, an offering made by fire for a sweet fragrance to Yahuwah. And you shall offer one male goat as a sin offering and two male lambs a year old as a peace offering. And the Kohen shall wave them besides the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before Yahuwah besides the two lambs. They are Kodesh to Yahuwah for the Kohen. And on this same day you shall proclaim a Kodesh gathering for yourselves. You do no servile work on it, a law forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when you reap the harvest of your land, do not completely reap the corners of your field when you reap, and do not gather any gleaning from your harvest. Leave them for the poor and for the stranger. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing of trumpets, a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, On the tenth day of this seventh month is Yom HaKippurim. It shall be a Kodesh gathering for you. And you shall afflict your beings, and shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. And you do no work on that same day, for it is a Yom Kippurim, to make atonement for you before Yahuwah, your Elohim. For any being who is not afflicted on that same day, he shall be cut off from his people. And any being who does any work on that same day, that being I shall destroy from the midst of his people. You do no work a law forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It is a Shabbat of rest to you, and you shall afflict your beings. On the ninth day of the month at evening, from evening to evening, you observe your Shabbat. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month is the festival of Sukkoth for seven days to Yahuwah. On the first day is a Kodesh gathering. You do no servile work. For seven days you bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. On the eighth day there shall be a Kodesh gathering for you, and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. It is a closing festival. You do no servile work. These are the appointed times of Yahuwah, which you proclaim as Kodesh gatherings, to bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah a burnt offering and a grain offering, a slaughtering and drink offerings, as commanded for every day, besides the Shabbatoth of Yahuwah, and besides your gifts 
and besides all your vows, and besides all your voluntary offerings which you give to Yahweh. On the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you gather in the fruit of the land, celebrate the festival of Yahweh for seven days. On the first day is a rest, and on the eighth day a rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of good trees, branches of palm trees, twigs of leafy trees, and willows of the stream, and shall rejoice before Yahweh your Elohim for seven days. And you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yahweh for seven days in the year, a law forever in your generations. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites dwell in booths, so that your generations know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Thus did Moshe speak of the appointed times of Yahweh to the children of Israel. Vayikra, Leviticus, chapter 24. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Command the children of Yisrael that they bring to you clear oil of pressed olives for the light to make the lamps burn continually. Outside the veil of the witness in the tent of appointment, Aharon is to arrange it from evening until morning before Yahuwah continually, a law forever throughout your generations. He is to arrange the lamps on the clean gold lampstand before Yahweh continually. And you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it, two tenth parts in each cake. And you shall put them in two rows, six in a row, on the clean table before Yahweh. And you shall put clear frankincense on each row, and it shall be on the bread as a remembrance portion, an offering made by fire to Yahweh. On every Shabbat, he is to arrange it before Yahweh continually from the children of Yisrael, an everlasting covenant. And it shall be for Aharon and his sons, and they shall eat it in the Kodesh place, because it is most Kodesh to him from the offerings of Yahweh made by fire, an everlasting law. And the son of an Israelite woman, whose father was a Mitzrite, went out among the children of Yisrael. And a Yisraelite woman's son and a man of Yisrael strove in the camp. And the Yisraelite woman's son blasphemed the name and cursed. So they brought him to Moshe. Now his mother's name was Shelomith, the daughter of Divri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in under guard, that it might be declared to them at the word of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Bring the one who has cursed outside the camp, and all those who heard him shall lay their hands on his head, and all the congregation shall stone him. And speak to the children of Israel, saying, Anyone who curses his Elohim shall bear his sin. And he who blasphemes the name of Yahweh shall certainly be put to death. And all the congregation certainly stone him, the stranger as well as the native. When he blasphemes the name, he is put to death. And he who smites the life from any man shall certainly be put to death. And he who smites a beast repays it, body for body. And when a man inflicts a blemish upon his neighbor, as he has done, so it is done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he inflicts a blemish upon him, so it is done to him. And he who smites a beast repays it. And he who kills a man is put to death. You are to have one right ruling for the stranger and for the native. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim. And Moshe spoke to the children of Yisrael, and they brought the one who cursed outside the camp and stoned him with stones. And the children of Yisrael did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe.
Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 25. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall observe a Shabbat to Yahuwah. Six years you sow your field, and six years you prune your vineyard, and gather in its fruit. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a Shabbat of rest, a Shabbat to Yahuwah. Do not sow your field, and do not prune your vineyard. Do not reap what grows of its own of your harvest, and do not gather the grapes of your unpruned vine, for it is a year of rest for the land. And the Shabbat of the land shall be to you for food, for you and your servant, and for your female servant and your hired servant, and for the stranger who sojourns with you, and for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land. All its crops are for food, and you shall count seven Shabbatoth of years for yourself, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Shabbatoth of years shall be to you forty-nine years. You shall then sound a ram's horn to pass through on the tenth day of the seventh month. On Yom HaKippurim, cause a ram's horn to pass through all your land. And you shall kadosh the fiftieth year and proclaim release throughout all the land to all its inhabitants, it is a yovel for you. And each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you return to his clan. The fiftieth year is a yovel to you. Do not sow, nor reap what grows of its own, nor gather from its unpruned vine. It is a yovel. It is kodesh to you. Eat from the field its crops. In the year of this yovel, let each one of you return to his possession. And when you sell whatever to your neighbor or buy from the hand of your neighbor, do not exploit one another. According to the number of years after the Yovel, you buy from your neighbor, and according to the number of years of crops he sells to you. According to the greater number of years, you increase its price, and according to the fewer number of years, you diminish its price, because he sells to you according to the number of the years of the crops. And do not oppress one another, but you shall revere your Elohim, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. And you shall do my laws, and guard my right rulings, and shall do them. And you shall dwell in the land in safety, and the land shall yield its fruit, and you shall eat to satisfaction, and shall dwell there in safety. And since you might say, What do we eat in the seventh year? since we do not sow nor gather in our crops. Therefore, I have commanded my barakah on you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth the crop for three years. And you shall sow in the eighth year, and eat of the old crop until the ninth year. Eat of the old until its crop comes in. And the land is not to be sold beyond reclaim, for the land is mine. For you are sojourners and settlers with me. And provide for a redemption for the land in all the land of your possession. When your brother becomes poor and has sold some of his possession, and his Redeemer, a close relative, comes to redeem it, then he shall redeem what his brother sold. And when the man has no one to redeem it, but he himself becomes able to redeem it, then let him count the years since its sale, and return the remainder to the man to whom he sold it, that he shall return to his possession. And if his hand has not found enough to give back to him, then what was sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of Yovel. And it shall be released in the Yovel, and he shall return to his possession. And when a man sells a house in a walled city, then his right of redemption shall be at the end of the year after it is sold. His right of redemption lasts a year. But if it is not redeemed within a complete year, then the house in the walled city shall be established beyond reclaim to the buyer of it throughout his generations. It is not released in the Oveil. The houses of villages, however, which have no wall around them, are reckoned as the field of the country. A right of redemption belongs to it, and they are released in the Oveil. As for the cities of the Lewites, 
and the houses in the cities of their possession, the Laywites have a right of redemption forever. And that which is redeemed from the Laywites, both the sale of a house and the city of his possession, shall be released in the year of Yovel, because the houses in the cities of the Laywites are their possession in the midst of the children of Israel. But the field of the open land of their cities is not sold, for it is their everlasting possession. And when your brother becomes poor, and his hand has failed with you, then you shall sustain him, and he shall live with you, like a stranger or a sojourner. Take no interest from him or profit, but you shall revere your Elohim, and your brother shall live with you. Do not lend him your silver on interest, and do not lend him your food for profit. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to give you the land of Canaan to be your Elohim. And when your brother who dwells by you becomes poor and sells himself to you, do not make him serve as a slave, but as a hired servant. As a settler, he is with you and serves you until the year of Yovel. And then he shall leave you, he and his children with him, and shall return to his own clan, even return to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim. They are not sold as slaves. Do not rule over him with harshness, but you shall revere your Elohim. And your male and female slaves whom you have from the nations that are around you, from them you buy male and female slaves, and also from the sons of the strangers sojourning among you, from them you buy, and from their clans who are with you, which they shall bring forth in your land, and they shall be your property. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them as a possession. They are your slaves for all time. But over your brothers, the children of Israel, you do not rule with harshness one over another. Now when a sojourner or a settler with you becomes rich, and your brother with him becomes poor, and sells himself to the settler or sojourner with you, or to a member of the sojourner's clan, after he has been sold, there is a right of redemption to him. One of his brothers redeems him, or his uncle, or his uncle's son redeems him, or anyone who is a close relative to him in his clan redeems him. Or if he is able, then he shall redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him who bought him. The price of his release shall be according to the number of years from the year that he was sold to him until the year of Yovel. As the days of a hired servant, it is with him. If there are yet many years according to them, he repays the price of his redemption from the silver of his purchase. And if few years are left until the year of Yovel, then he shall reckon with him, and according to his years he repays him the price of his redemption. He is with him as a yearly hired servant, and he does not rule with harshness over him before your eyes. And if he is not redeemed in these years, then he shall be released in the year of Yovel, he and his children with him. Because the children of Israel are servants to me, they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Vaigra, Leviticus, chapter 26. Do not make idols for yourselves, and do not put up a carved image or a pillar for yourselves, and do not place a stone image in your land to bow down to it, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. Guard my Shabbatot and reverence my Mikdash. I am Yahweh. If you walk in my laws and guard my commands and shall do them, then I shall give you rain in its season, and the land shall yield its crops, and the trees of the field yield their fruit. And your threshing shall last till the time of the grape harvest, and the grape harvest shall last till the time of sowing. And you shall eat your bread until you have enough, and shall dwell in your land safely. And I shall give peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and no one make you afraid." 
and I shall clear the land of evil beasts and not let the sword go through your land. And you shall pursue your enemies, and they shall fall by the sword before you. And five of you shall pursue a hundred, and a hundred of you pursue ten thousand. And your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. And I shall turn to you and make you bear fruit, and shall increase you, and shall establish my covenant with you. And you shall eat the old supply, and clear out the old because of the new. And I shall put my Mishkan in your midst, and my being shall not reject you. And I shall walk in your midst, and shall be your Elohim, and you shall be my people. I am Yahweh, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from being their slaves. And I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. But if you do not obey me and do not do all these commands, and if you reject my laws, or if your being loathes my right rulings so that you do not do all my commands but break my covenant, I also do this to you. And I shall appoint sudden alarm over you, wasting disease and inflammation, destroying the eyes and consuming the life. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I shall turn my face against you, and you shall be smitten before your enemies. And those who hate you shall rule over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And after all these, if you do not obey me, then I shall punish you seven times more for your sins. And I shall break the pride of your power, and shall make your shamayim like iron, and your earth like bronze. And your strength shall be spent in vain, and your land not yield its crops, nor the trees of the land yield their fruit. And if you walk contrary to me, and refuse to obey me, I shall bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins, and send wild beasts among you, which shall bereave you of your children. And I shall cut off your livestock, and make you few in number, and your highways shall be deserted. And if you are not instructed by me by these, but walk contrary to me, then I also shall walk contrary to you, and I myself shall smite you seven times for your sins. And I shall bring against you a sword, executing the vengeance of my covenant. And you shall gather together in your cities, and I shall send pestilence among you, and you shall be given into the hand of the enemy. When I have cut off your supply of bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall bring back to you your bread by weight, and you shall eat and not be satisfied. And if in spite of this you do not obey me, but walk contrary to me, then I shall walk contrary to you in wrath, and I myself shall punish you seven times for your sins. And you shall eat the flesh of your sons, and eat the flesh of your daughters. And I shall destroy your high places, and cut down your sun pillars, and put your carcasses on the carcasses of your idols. And my being shall loathe you, and I shall turn your cities into ruins, and lay your mikdashim waste, and not smell your sweet fragrances. And I shall lay the land waste, and your enemies who dwell in it shall be astonished at it. And I shall scatter you among the Gentiles, and draw out a sword after you. And your land shall be desert, and your cities ruins. And the land enjoys Shabbatot as long as it lies waste, and you are in your enemy's land. Then the land would rest and enjoy its Shabbatot. As long as it lies waste, it rests, for the time it did not rest on your Shabbatot when you dwelt in it. And as for those of you who are left, I shall send faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall cause them to flee. And they shall flee as though retreating from a sword, and they shall fall when no one pursues. And they shall stumble over one another as from before a sword when no one pursues. And you shall be unable to stand before your enemies. And you shall perish among the Gentiles, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And those of you who are left rot away in their wickedness in your enemies' lands, and also in their fathers' wickednesses rot away with them.
But if they confess their wickedness and the wickedness of their fathers with their trespass in which they trespassed against me, and that they also have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if their uncircumcised heart is then humbled and they accept the punishment of their wickedness, then I shall remember my covenant with Yaakov and also my covenant with Yitzhak and also remember my covenant with Avraham and remember the land. For the land was abandoned by them and enjoying its Shabbatot while lying waste without them. And they were paying for their wickedness because they rejected my right rulings and because their being loathed my laws. And yet for all this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I shall not reject them, nor shall I loathe them so as to destroy them and break my covenant with them. For I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. Then I shall remember for their sake the covenant of the ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Mitzrayim before the eyes of the nations to be their Elohim. I am Yahuwah. These are the laws and the right rulings and the Torot which Yahuwah made between himself and the children of Yisrael on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moshe. Waigra, Leviticus, chapter 27. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man separates a vow by your evaluation of lives unto Yahuwah, when your evaluation is of a male from 20 years old up to 60 years old, then your evaluation shall be 50 shekels of silver, according to the shekel of the Kodesh place. And if it is a female, then your evaluation shall be 30 shekels. And if from 5 years old up to 20 years old, then your evaluation for a male shall be 20 shekels, and for a female, 10 shekels. And if from a month old up to 5 years old, then your evaluation for a male shall be 5 shekels of silver, and for a female, your evaluation shall be 3 shekels of silver. And if from 60 years old and above, if it is a male, then your evaluation shall be 15 shekels, and for a female, 10 shekels. But if he is too poor to pay your evaluation, then he shall present himself before the Kohen, and the Kohen shall lay a value for him. According to the ability of him who vowed, the Kohen shall value him. And if it is a beast of which they bring an offering to Yahweh, all such given to Yahweh is Kodesh. He is not to replace it or exchange it, good for spoilt or spoilt for good. And if he at all exchanges beast for beast, then both it and the one exchanged for it is Kodesh. And if it is any unclean beast of which they do not bring an offering to Yahweh, then he shall present the beast before the Kohen, and the Kohen shall value it, whether it is good or spoilt. According to your evaluation, O Kohen, so it shall be. But if he indeed redeems it, then he shall add one-fifth to your evaluation. And when a man kadosh his house to be Kodesh to Yahweh, then the Kohen shall value it, whether it is good or spoilt. As the Kohen values it, so it stands. And if he who kadosh it redeems his house, then he shall add one-fifth of the silver of your evaluation to it, and it shall be his. And if a man kadosh to Yahweh, a field he owns, then your evaluation shall be according to the seed for it, a hamer of barley seed, at fifty shekels of silver. If he kadosh his field from the year of Yovel, according to your evaluation, it stands. But if he kadosh his field after the Yovel, then the Kohen shall reckon to him the silver due according to the years that remain till the year of Yovel, and it shall be deducted from your evaluation. And if he who kadosh the field would redeem it, then he shall add one-fifth of the silver of your evaluation to it, and it shall be his. And if he does not redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it is no longer redeemed. 
but the field, when it is released in the Yovel, is Kodesh to Yaukah as a dedicated field to be the possession of the Kohen. And if a man Kadosh to Yaukah, a field which he has bought, which is not the field of his possession, then the Kohen shall reckon to him the amount of your evaluation up to the year of Yovel, and he shall give your evaluation on that day, Kodesh to Yaukah. In the year of Yovel, the field returns to him from whom he bought it, to him whose is the possession of the land. And all your evaluations are to be according to the shekel of the Kodesh place, 20 geiraz to the shekel. However, a firstborn of the beasts, which is firstborn to Yaukah, no man Kadosh it, whether bull or sheep, it belongs to Yaukah. And if among the unclean beasts, then he shall ransom it according to your evaluation, and shall add one-fifth to it. And if it is not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your evaluation. However, whatever a man lays under ban for Yahuwah of all that he has, man and beast, or the field of his possession, is not sold or redeemed. Whatever is laid under ban is most Kodesh to Yahuwah. No one under the ban, under the ban among men, is ransomed, but shall certainly be put to death. And all the tithe of the land, of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, belongs to Yaukah. It is Kodesh to Yaukah. If a man indeed redeems any of his tithes, he adds one-fifth to it, and the entire tithe of the herd and of the flock, all that passes under the rod, the tenth one is Kodesh to Yaukah. He does not inquire whether it is good or spoilt, nor does he exchange it. And if he exchanges it at all, then both it and the one exchanged for it are Kodesh. It is not redeemed. These are the commands which Yahuwah commanded Moshe for the children of Yisrael on Mount Sinai.